my chest just started going mental. My heart was was going mental. And I can remember turning to Brendan Taylor at the time, Zimbabwe, an international player, and I go, my my ticket's fucked, mate. My, I was like, my ticket's fucked. Like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, my God, is this just real bad anxiety like everybody gets? And it was just in my chest going mental and... Um, I could just feel it and I was it was just incredibly uncomfortable I went inside I, I thought that's when I thought I was going to die at 10 30 was the only time in the whole yeah. process that I thought Jesus I'm going to pass out here and passing out like I needed to pass out to make it stop and I couldn't pass out I, w- I was trying to be sick in the loo I couldn't be sick I was put on oxygen cut a long story short when they gave me some sugary drinks I I, I thought I felt a little bit better um so they thought, oh, low blood sugar or uh, it's a virus. So that kind of, once they said that, that kind of takes them down a whole nother path. Even though mm. I'm like, my heart here is screwed, guys. Feel my chest. I could see my shirt um, pulsing with my heartbeat. Honestly, wow. my heart was coming out of my chest. Um, and I, that's when I thought I was going to die at 10.30, just before I got put on oxygen. Cut a long story short, I got driven uh, I got driven home because I was in no state um, to drive home. Um, got home. I was in that much of a bad state. I I got left at Trent Bridge, the stairs at Trent Bridge, because I hadn't got my house keys, because everything. I just got out of there to go home, and I left my car. I left all my kit there. Um, oh, wow. And I left my house keys. So I rung my mom on the way back and said, can you come and pick me up? Somehow she found me at the bottom of Trent Bridge stairs. I was just in the stairwell which you would have been in yeah. a million times at Trent Bridge yeah. before you go up to the um, dining room at Trent Bridge and I was just curled up in a ball there because I was so cold and my heart was still so uncomfortable and I don't know how she found me because she's never been in there but she found me took me home I was on the sofa at home my heart was going that mental the whole sofa was vibrating no joke oh, my um, God. and I was waiting basically cut a long story short I was waiting for the doctor to come and see me who was seeing me at, at six o'clock and by now it's about four o'clock a lot of time had passed um because it was a long journey from Cambridge to yeah. Nottingham where I should have died I should have really died in that car um but Fuck. for some reason I didn't for whatever reason and I got home doctor was waiting for, well I was waiting for the doctor I I got up off the sofa I crawled up the stairs because I couldn't physically walk at this point um and then I got upstairs and I was sick everywhere I was really badly sick because this is obviously a sign of my mm. organs shutting down and looking after my vital organs um and my body shutting down looking after yeah. my vital organs I got into bed just to be comfortable in the fetus position as you do when you're hung over <laughs> really badly hung over and trying to get in a comfortable position uh, I rang the doctor and by now my shoulder was all my left arm was really hurting and I was trying to massage my shoulder and I was thinking, I haven't been to the gym for a couple of days. Why is it so sore? And obviously that's a sign of a heart attack. Yeah. Rang the doctor and explained all these symptoms like being sick. I'm really cold. I'm shivering. Um, my left arm's hurting. He was like, go straight to hospital. Don't wait for me. Don't wait for an ambulance. Get your mum to take you straight to hospital. Uh, and my missus was with me at this time as well. Um, and I went straight to hospital, walked in and I was all gray. Apparently I can't remember my missus. I was all gray, walked straight into, well, kind of hobbled into hospital went straight to the loo because I was sick again oh, I got rushed God. straight into where all the action happens and I was hooked up to the machines and like you see in casualty you see in these films um where all the action happens and they plumbed me in and the doctor's face like I've never seen anything like it before they just couldn't believe my heart rate was going at 265 beats per minute 265 and 265 beats per minute and obviously i had been like that since 10 30 and now it's about 5 5 30 and bearing in mind with my condition if if you have an attack you die if, if it presents you die yeah generally 80 percent of people i found out later this condition is found in in post-mortems 80 percent of cases that have this oh and it presents uh, is found in post-mortem uh so i was incredibly lucky uh the doctor said um, cut a long story short, the, the anaesthetist was going to come in to put me to sleep because the only way to get me out of this rhythm was um, to shock me or the drugs were going to work and the drugs weren't working. I, me being me, I was adamant that the drugs are going to work. He's not going to have to put me to sleep and shock me. 
um, back in, like you see in the films. Mm. And the knee test was just about to come. And then suddenly my heart rate goes from 265 beats per minute. Imagine the noise in the, the theater with all the machines going at 265 beats per minute. And then it suddenly just clicks and goes straight back down to 60 beats per minute. And as soon as that happened, I was sick everywhere again. Oh my God. Um, and then, um, and then the doctor said, we think you've had a heart attack. Cut, again, cut a long story short loads of it happened that i what it was more a cardiac arrest than um, a heart attack yeah um, because i of my condition and it took three three and a half weeks in hospital to find out this condition um and i couldn't physically walk for the first week because of what my body had been through it was like the equivalent of doing five to six marathons on the bounce wow. what my body had gone through so luckily the thing that saved me i believe is because my heart was in such structurally it was in a good shape because i was so mm. fit yeah but obviously there's a lot of damage and a lot of bad stuff going on um so that put me in really good shape um to be able to survive an attack that i should never have survived um a couple of months later i had um i had an operation when i was in hospital but then i had another major heart operation which attached a defibrillator in my chest which so if something goes it's like a safety net if something goes wrong it like reboots me back and it restarts my heart. That's the only way I can describe it. Like yep. it electrocutes you to reset mm. your heart. And that's happened twice since, uh, which is pretty scary. That's happened. Itself. That's happened already. Twice, yeah. Holy, so, so it geez. happened three weeks after. It happened three weeks after. Um, yeah, three weeks after it got put in. So how it didn't burst out my chest, I don't know. It kind yeah. of like it shoots me like about a meter or two back. Um, and I was actually on stage at the time. This is the worst thing. I was on stage doing a Q&A at the time. I was stressed. I'd been really busy in the day before. Uh, no, that day, I'd really stressed. And then I, like, jogged across the ground. But not jog, but shuffled quickly across the ground. So when I got on stage, my heart rate was up. I know this because of the information in the DFib tells you when you go into hospital. My heart was about 135 when I was on stage because I'd rushed across anxieties and stuff. And it never stopped and it never stopped. So it went up to 300 beats per minute. And then that's what? when my, yeah, that's when my, because it, I know this information because it's in the defib. And then that's when the defib kicked in and restarted my heart. And can you feel that? Yeah. Can you, can you feel that? Like, oh, as no. like it's you must've had it, felt that not slowing down at all. And it just going not, crazy right, because you knew like, cause I was talking, I was actually making a joke. I was, I was just <laughs> making a, a joke about my heart, believe it or not. And I was, uh, and I was in, you know, when you're in it, you're like, yeah, you're talking, yeah. you, you know, you've got, you know, you're anxious, but you're talking, so you can't really feel it. Um, and I didn't know much about it, but the guy that, Matty Boyce, you know, you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. him playing yeah. against him. He was actually talking with me and apparently you could see, and below my eye, my eye here was pulsing really badly. So obviously my body was like, going to um, like, let this stop. And then it, it shot and it kicked me back. Uh, sometimes it knocks you, like some people are like unconscious for a little bit or, but this wasn't, I was completely conscious um, and I had the mic in. So the noise of the, the like almost explosion in the mic, you could, it was really loud. Wow. And it's like I, the only one, the way I describe it, people describe it as like being kicked in the chest or punched. The way I describe it is like being hit by Anthony Joshua in the chest and then putting your hands in the main electrics at the same time. Wow. Um, because okay. it electrocutes you, obviously. Um, and yeah, I, when it happened, I was like, oh my God, one, what's just happened? And then I realized. And then I was just like that. It's just the most phenomenal thing, like scary as anything, but yeah. it's just like mad how this can happen inside your body. And, uh, and then I, I talked and I said, look, if you want to know what a detail going off looks like, you've just seen it. And I just walked straight off stage and Done. I went to the doctors. I had to oh. just relax. Like I was meant to be commentating after and obviously I couldn't do that. And then I went straight to hospital for them to reset the device in my heart. So once it goes off, it has to be reset. And is there is yeah. there any is there anything that they say brings that on, or is that just a part of the condition? Stress, stress. So you stress, have... but anything anything that's going to raise your heart rate is just like eh, eh, you can't do that. Wow. So yeah. oh, like that is that's in three hundred yeah. beats per minute. That's insane. Yeah. What? Um, yeah. Obviously, there's 
there's that moment when the the doctors tell you that you're not going to be able to play anymore um how did they how did they broach that and how did how did it go for you what, what was your reaction it obviously be, it can be a brutal time so uh, these are the things that i missed out on the story when i got rushed into hospital i knew that the sri lanka series was only two three weeks away mm. england versus sri lanka and i was in the test team at the time and uh i was like just get me ready i walked into hospital and i said just make sure i'm right for three weeks time i'm playing sri lanka in three weeks time and the doctor that a uh, really nice indian guy um loved his cricket and he knew who i was mm. and he i so said he knew what i was talking about and he was like i was like just get me ready for sri lanka get me ready for sri lanka and obviously he's thinking not a chance in hell are you going to be <laughs> playing any cricket um and i'm like just get me so it shows where my head was my body was absolutely screwed like shutting down broken uh but my head was like just get me ready for sri lanka i just need to be ready for sri lanka um and then then obviously uh fast forward a, a week or so the doctors are brutal and like some you're lucky if you get some really like the doctors are amazing they're phenomenal but certain doctors tell you stuff one way and certain doctors tell you another yeah. some are br- blunt and brutal it is what it is but at the end of the day this is your life and yeah. my life as i knew it all i'd done since i was born was play sport have a ball at my feet or in my hands uh, throwing kicking and this was my life as well it was my job mm. Um, and I was just at the start of my journey, smashing international cricket. And, and then they like, was like, you can't play any sport again. You can't exercise again. You can't drink again. You can't do this. You can't do that. Your life that you know it is over, mate. And I'm like, you just go, Oof. you like break down. Um, and Jeez. it was, yeah, it was incredibly tough. Um, it was like an ego blow, massive ego dent. You're used to being the best at what you do. Now you can't mm. do that. Uh, what can I do? I can't do anything. I can't drink. Um, I can't exercise. All I've known in my life is exercise. I can't do that. Uh, so what can I do? And he was like, oh, you can play golf. And I was like, golf? This is an old man's sport. I'm not playing golf. Um, and now, so again, fast forward. Now the golf has been... The thing that saved my life really yeah. like it sounds really bizarre that i'm putting so much on golf and it's an old man sport but it's been brilliant it's mm. given me an opportunity to challenge myself learn a new sport um, be competitive again because it's the one thing of my condition i can't be competitive because obviously that raises your heart rate and your adrenaline level no way. and stuff like that so golf has been brilliant um for that but it was brutal finding a way and for the first time in life you know professional sportsman you're invincible i was invincible Mm. i was 26 i was at the peak of my powers as fit as anything playing international cricket traveling the world and then that all goes no mate you're not doing that again let alone that's your job and you're being paid pretty healthy so you're like what am i gonna do huge ego dent uh you know you you learn that you're not invincible for the first time couldn't let alone all the physical issues that were going on i couldn't physically walk i um every time i walked up a set of stairs i thought i was going to have another heart attack um these major heart surgeries um, i couldn't move my arm above here for the first um three months after having the surgery because the wires that are screwed into the bottom of my heart will come out my heart if i if I lift my arm up, oh my god! Um, like things that people don't know. Yeah, uh, I can't sleep on my left side because of my heart beat on the on the bed is like because it's irregular. I feel it all the time, and I'm so conscious of it. Uh, I can't drink alcohol. Every time I cross the road, I think twice about it because it might spike my heart rate. You know, all these insecurities that people don't think about. Yeah. Um, I have thousands and thousands of ectopic beats a day, which is like somebody flicking you in the chest. Wow. um yeah it's mental <laughs> what 